Greetings, friends. You are on the Military Reports channel. And today we will discuss with you the situation in Ukraine on the 4th of June, 2024 year. A lot of things have happened today, so let's get started. And we will start with you from the South Donetsk direction. Yesterday, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the first posts began to arrive, the first posts on various channels began to be published that there was a serious battle in the area of Uglidar from 1300. Muller's artillery 152nd to work without stopping. The Russian aviation of the plane by plane in the course of it seems to have begun. There were such posts published, it meant that a lot of information was received from various Winnicor's sources. That yes, it really started, they began to confirm, but no geolocation, no video was published. It was very difficult to believe this information. Well, I wanted to wait for some more serious specifics. And since this morning, the first posts, the first geolocations have been published from the area of the settlement of Uglidar. But if we study these frames anyway, then here we will see exclusively the work of Russian drone guides in warehouses, there say. Artillery shells for 152 mm, let's say, equipment, artillery and so on and so forth. That is, in fact, if we summarize everything like that and study these frames in detail, then of course it's well. They don't look a bit like the offensive that we just read in the previous post. But, but a little later, again today, on the 4th of June, also during the morning, very interesting information was received from the village of Paraskovevka. To be more precise, these shots were published. In these frames, we see the westernmost outskirts of the settlement. We are seeing the movement of a Russian tank, which for some reason drove into a ditch. That is, for what reason he drove into a ditch, for what he was driving in this direction, we cannot give an answer. But in general, it is important to note that the advance of the Russian tank. The movement of the Russian tank was marked along the central street in the Shevchenko street area. It turns out that in the village of Poroskovevka, the Russian tank reached the very the westernmost guard and fell into the ditch. Into the ditch. For what reason, it is impossible to say. But based on these shots, most cartographers have updated their maps, including neutral ones. Confirming that indeed during the battles over the past few days, Russian units managed to establish full control over Proskoveka. So in fact the battle for this settlement is over. We expect confirmation of this information from the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation in the near future. But again, these shots also do not confirm what we read in that post about the offensive, that something has begun. Of course this is not enough. A little later, several more shots of the outskirts of Konstantinovka itself were published. For example, in these frames, we can also see the work of Russian drone guides. It was discovered that Ukrainian tanks were destroyed during a strike in Beer by a disembodied tank. A little to the north, the 238th Guards Artillery Brigade worked. During the counter-battery struggle, let's say, a Ukrainian mortar was identified, after which it was hit, and the mortar was destroyed. However, these frames as a whole do not confirm that post about the fact that something has started. A little later, there were shots from the area of the village of Pobeda. There are already some more serious shots here. In these frames, we can see with you the work of drones from the AFU, and in these frames, we see massive strikes on personnel. Equipment, infantry of Russian units, which, as we see with you, are moving from north to south. Let's say the equipment went, the tanks went. In other words, there was a very serious battle, which the unit of the 33rd Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine tried to stop, and most likely during this attack. It was possible to knock out some amount of equipment, perhaps the Russian offensive was stopped. However, we do not have enough information to draw 100% concrete conclusions there. But again, these frames are not enough to say that something serious was happening in the direction. And just before the very moment when they started shooting this video, the footage came again from the 79th Brigade from the Ukrainian Brigade, which is responsible for the defense of Konstantinovka. And here the frames really correspond to the reality of the post that we discussed with you. Russian units began a massive assault on the village of Konstantinovka. The settlement was stormed in several directions, 
and the last extreme geolocation that could be established was recorded in this area. That is, if we watch the video again, it is the first part, the most basic part. Here, pay attention to the technique as it moves. Here is an important frame that allows you to determine the movement, firm where exactly the technique was moving. We see turtle tanks, and now we see this area. Pay attention to it. So far, this area has not been geolocated, where exactly these events took place. Where exactly the Russian units managed to stop by but the primary analysis suggests that there is an extremely high probability that the Russian units managed to get all the way to these farms. Therefore, so far these farms are painted in a gray zone. In other words, there is a low, well, as an average probability, there is an average level, that during the offensive on Konstantinovka over the past day, Russian units managed to reach this stronghold. So, if we sum up all the information, all that we have seen, then the Russian equipment, the Russian army was advancing approximately along this line, and during the offensive, it was possible to get at least here. Perhaps even to wedge into the defense of the Afu and enter the settlement of Konstantinovka itself. So far, there are no absolute geolocations of confirmations, except for one, where a Russian tank was hit by a blow. And in a pevedron. In other words, it turns out that the distance was overcome quite a lot, and in general, perhaps I repeat, now, it is possible that battles are already being fought in Konstantinovka itself, at least on its southeastern and eastern outskirts. But again, that wasn't all. And today, the armed forces of Ukraine also publish another footage. It is the movement along the Sweetwater line. Also, as part of a large column of equipment, Russian units stormed, or rather tried to move even closer to the main supports along the Route 0524 between Uglidar and Konstantinovka and Vodian. In other words, as you can see, if we sum up everything with you now, we summarize everything. Then most likely the Russian army has launched a large-scale offensive along the uglidar vodyanaya konstantinovka pobeda line. Over the past 24 hours, at least geolocations are fixed in five directions. In the direction of pobeda konstantinovka the direction of Novomikhailovka paraskovevka further to the west. The direction turns out to be Novomikhailovka Konstantinovka, the southern part, the southeastern part, the direction of Sweet Water, and the direction of Uglidar. Well, there was no specific geolocation on Uglidar. There was no specific, let's say, specifics. So perhaps there was no offensive here. Well, maybe just an attempt to shift the focus of the Ukrainian command from one direction to another in order to somehow confuse, and possibly stretch and gain some time. In other words, it is definitely possible to conclude that it is worth waiting for more news during the coming night. Most likely, several additional waves are leading into battle, reinforcements, and it will probably be really. Everything will depend on how the situation develops. If the Russian units manage to gain a foothold in the southeastern eastern part of Konstantinovka, of course, to repel a counterattack, then there will be a matter of bringing a bull, bringing reinforcements, changing, introducing new assault groups, and trying to further advance as close as possible to the central part, best of all to these firms, in order to finally cut the main artery supply routes 0524, leading to Vodian and Uglidar. In other words, the most serious fighting really began here. We are waiting for more information. And before we move on, it is very important to note the information coming from the Black Sea. If you remember, the other day we discussed with you that there were rumors that Putin. Well, the Russian military, civilian leadership gave instructions to shoot down all drones, all intelligence in the Black Sea. And today, if the monument does not change, perhaps three or four times posts were published that global hacks disappeared from radars. Reapers disappeared, their transponders were turned off more precisely. But before there was a desire to put a post on the map, there were posts that these transponders were turned on again. And it's just some kind of routine of these drones that flew and turned off for a moment, then turned back on. But again, if we talk about the very latest news, then at about 6.30 Moscow time, according to the latest information, it was published that in the Black Sea area, after all, 
one of the Global Hawk Arc 4B drones, fell due to some incomprehensible problems and some problems. We are waiting for confirmation of this information. There were definitely no problems or problems. It was definitely the impact of some systems of the Russian Federation. Most likely. At least, such disembodied people do not fall so easily. Naturally, Western countries and NATO countries are unlikely to be able to find a relationship between, say, these breakdowns and the impact from the Russian Federation. But we all understand perfectly well that as things are interconnected as a whole, well, then we are moving with you for a few more points in this direction worth discussing. In the area of the settlement of Nikolaev, during reconnaissance activities, a Ukrainian station, a Ukrainian radar, and a P-18 were identified during a Lancet strike. This radar was destroyed. A little to the east in the area of Zaporozhye, just north of the settlement of Gulyapol. Russian sources publish footage of strikes on a settlement called New Zaporozhye with the use of a fab in the 250s. Pay attention to how deep the bombs flew along the front line. From Gulyapol itself to this settlement, the distance is 25 kilometers. Well, this is nothing for the fabs, but of course the blow was struck. They did not have combat contact from the depth. But in general, we see how deep, but Russian units are able to conduct reconnaissance and throw the fabs accordingly. According to the Staromayorsky Harvest, daily information about further progress is received, but if we talk about personnel, no progress is recorded, with the exception of individual strikes by those Jelmers, but already to the north. As you can see, this is the most important identifier when there is no geolocation on Earth. This is a shift in focus. At the moment, we are observing that over the past few days, since the first, let's say, June, the focus has shifted north and north to, let's say, the South Donetsk direction. Here we see with you a large number of explosions and strikes in the village of Storozova, and it's not boring to the north. And to be wary of Staromayorsky, there are no frames at all, and these are literally several frames that were published from the harvest. But there is an extremely high probability that these were archival frames back in May. That is, according to some indirect signs, it can really be said that the front is shifting from the north. And already Russian units may be on their way to this strong point, which is located near the settlement of Makarovka. Then we are moving with you to the Avdiivka direction, where Russian units continue their assault operations. In the direction of the settlement of Krasnogorovka. Geolocations of strikes in beer by drones on the units of the Russian Red Army, let's say in the western. On the western outskirts of Krasnogorovka were also published here. And based on those frames, we updated the map. Now we have painted over several blocks, several houses in this part, under the control of the Russian Federation. But also as you can see a large number of territories, a large territory is still in the gray zone. Counter-battery duels were conducted in Krasnogoryevka itself. Russian units were engaged in identifying positions in the beer of operators, drone guides of the armed forces of Ukraine, mortars. Calculations, warehouses, storage points of the kit were identified, and strikes were struck at all these points. But so far without any obvious recorded advances on the ground. Then we are moving with you to the Charles direction. Here, cartographers began to confirm the information, that is, a wave of updates gradually began on all maps that, in general, Russian units had already entered eastern Karlovka. It was unlikely that they would move further to the western one, to the central one. There are some insurmountable water barriers here, but it's worth paying attention to the number of frames published, let's say. North of Karlovka, further west, a huge amount of equipment was destroyed by the Sparta unit during strikes in beer by drones. In other words, a large series of videos has been published, a large selection. And in general, we see with you where it works, where it is now, what the Russian units are focused on now. There is a sweep of the main supply routes, transportation along these roads, it is along these, let's say, supply lines. That reinforcements and support for some state of the AFU unit in the Asnobrodovka area are being conducted. But this area, based on unpublished personnel, is under full, let's say in beer control. 
And so far Ukraine has not been able to do anything but losses here achieve. In the northern direction, there is still unconfirmed information that the village of Sokol is located in a semi-encirclement. In a semicircle, and not only the village of Sokol, as well as the main company support point, are located north of Sokol. To be more precise, various cartographers claim that during the fighting that took place over the past days, Russian fighters managed to establish control over this part of the forest lanes along the railway and, among other things, managed to expand the control zone already on the very approaches to the village of Sokol. So far, there are no active assault actions in the settlement. Let me remind you that the other day there was information that Russian units came in, but they rolled back. Perhaps after they found out something, something became clear. Next, we are moving with you to the watch direction. Information is received here that an explosion occurred in the Druzhkovka area at night, after which a series of secondary detonations were observed and heard. According to the clock itself, there are no changes. The eastern citadel of the Yar clock is under tight fire control. Blows are struck by fabs, blows are carried by the sun. That is, well, here the Apu bear high losses. But they do not surrender the citadel of the Yarskaya clock, fighting is underway. There is no news on the northern coverage, no geolocation, as well as no news from the Kleshevka area. A small advance, or rather an adjustment of the front, you could observe from most cartographers in the area of Razdalovka. Today, the Viso published footage of drone strikes and in beer on units of the Russian army at this point. And most of them are small trenches, a small, so to speak, network of supports, and here is a small piece, let's say. Now painted in color in red, which, let's say, confirms the control of Russian units. The distance to Razdalovka is minimal, but so far there is no information about the active phase of the offensive of the settlement. Seversk is under tight fire control. Russian units carry massive fire strikes with the use of fabs in the sun. Pokey does not reach, the fabs work exclusively. Perhaps a multiple launch rocket system, but without any attempts to attack the settlement in any of the directions. Then we are moving with you to the settlement of Izium. Let me remind you that a few days ago, we discussed with you that the Ukrainian units had moved their main, let's say, command centers. From the locality of Borova and Lyman, in the area of the locality of Izium. And we discussed with you back then that in the near future, we should expect the beginning of the publication of frames. And Iskander strikes on the TVD, on the PVD of the armed forces of Ukraine. And now they have already begun to be published. At first, just posts, and now a valid confirmation. Here, in the area of Izium, this small building was struck, which, according to sources, was used by the Afu as a strong point, possibly a command center. Then we are moving with you to the Kapinski direction. There is no progress on the ground, but the Russian army continues to destroy bridges. These bridges are being built, in my opinion, well, the Guinness Book of Records can include the speed with which Ukrainian units. Ukrainian engineers restore bridges across the Oskol River. Another blow, another explosion. Let me remind you that just yesterday we discussed footage from a slightly more northerly direction. Here, from the Cuban hub, footage was published of how the bridge was destroyed in this area, a large series of explosions. We remember these arrivals. In other words, we see with you that after the Apu restored all the crossings, they do it very quickly. The Russian units destroyed them all again. In other words, we can expect an escalation in this direction in the next few hours, if not minutes. And now we are moving towards the Kharkiv direction. There are two kinds of information coming in here. Ukrainian sources claim that counteroffensive actions are underway. Russian units claim that Russian units are advancing. And in general, the picture of Volchansk is not clear at all. There are several geolocations that are worth discussing, of course. First of all, if we talk about Western, let's say, cartographers, they still paint a part of northeastern Volchansk in the color of control in USU, to be more precise. I do not use this source as a reliable one, but although many people consider it a very professional source, well, you are not very familiar with him, so we do not accept his information, well, not that it is reliable. We have, as it were, 
take note of it for discussion, but we do not paint the territory. But Ukrainian sources claim that during the counteroffensive actions of the armed forces of Ukraine, they managed to regain control over the northeastern part of Volchansk, and, let's say, these frames are used for evidence, among other things. On them, we can observe a Russian soldier walking towards the Ukrainian positions with his hands raised. That is, it's just that there is terror by drones during most likely another raid. There may be the soldiers lost their nerves, and, in order to save his life, he decided to surrender. And the drones then brought him to the exit to the opposition of the armed forces of Ukraine. In other words, this is the story being told here, but immediately a little to the northwest of this section. Footage of the 36th Marine Brigade is published, as they work in beer, by an operator under the ruin of Russian units. This is where the blows are struck. Well, there are, there are some indirect signs that it is really in this direction, perhaps for some period of time. The Apu managed to regain control of the lost positions, or they were in a gray zone. But if we talk about the report of the North Group of Troops, then, on the contrary, the progress of Russian units in the east of Volchansk is reported here. In other words, it is very difficult to understand what is happening here or the map does not correspond to reality at all. Because the main part of these red zones, it was introduced during the first days of the first 10 days of the offensive there. When they painted there, from Volchansk to Kiev, all the red lines were painted there. Which is right up to Kiev already everything was captured, and on this basis, everything was painted there, yes. And now, the whole story is gradually being unwound, and, in fact, it is gradually being repainted. But perhaps this is not the result of the Ukrainian counteroffensive, but simply the result of clarifying the situation on the ground. Therefore, it is difficult to say what is happening here. But one thing is clear the citadel. The citadel is still under the control of the Apu. It is not yet possible to break through it. The Volchansky aggregate plant is also under the control of the Apu. That is, the main defensive lines are still held by the Apu. This means that you will have to spend a very long time here to break through the defense. There are practically no changes at all in the Lipsovsky directions. The movement front is static here. A few strokes are published, but in general no more. Russian units daily. Russian sources publish daily footage of the transfer of additional reinforcements somewhere on the front line. Perhaps these reinforcements are going to the north, perhaps somewhere in the Donbass. But in general, we receive this type of footage every day. Well, let's see what it will be. And let's discuss a little bit of political news. Let me remind you, I believe that hitting and knocking down the Global Hulk is also part of these events. Let's see if the evidence will still be provided by Russian sources or the Americans will report something about it. But in general, if we talk about the relations between Ukraine and the West today, there were a lot of posts from the United States of America about what they, first of all, allow. First, there were posts that the United States allowed strikes on the territory of the Russian Federation. Then, there were posts that it did not allow strikes to be carried deep into the territory of the Russian Federation. However, well, it was not announced in kilometers. And where it is deep in Russia is a long country. It's long. And deeply, it is possible the Urals. That is, well, what does deep mean, right? These are all relative things, of course. And he also received information from him that, well, the United States of America has never in its life imposed any restrictions on the air defense transferred to Ukraine in order to shoot down aircraft over the territory of the Russian Federation. And there was not even a clarification as to what, civilian or military. That is, in general, as if Ukraine was given carte blanche, additional air defense systems were handed over to Ukraine. Italy itself handed over and also for sure this system will go to the front line, if it were exactly Kharkiv. And some moments will begin there, of course. The moments will start serious there. Again, information is received about the first, let's say, experts, French advisors on the territory of Ukraine. Lavrov also commented on the situation with the mercenaries today, saying that any French soldier, any French person in any status, in some kind of near war, but of an instructor, a mercenary, or simply, will represent a legal target for the Russian Federation to destroy.